the Edox Geoscope, one of my favorite vintage world timers out there. Just a beautiful design from the 70s which immediately stands out. I was thrilled when a close friend in this hobby casually dropped that he purchased one recently and that he would show it to me. But my pure excitement transformed into an awkward fumbling around with the watch in my hands, as something just didn't feel right from the get-go. It's a very uncomfortable thing to tell a friend straight away, who has been in this hobby much longer than I am by the way, that I am suspicious about the originality. But he not only took it like a true friend, but also offered me to have a closer look straight away, not only to validate my theory, but also to warn other fellow vintage fans exactly how deceptive things can be with this specific model, the Edox Geoscope. Let's go ahead and clarify. Is it fake or original? On the Time Warn channel. My friend's surprise was layered. At first, of course, he was a bit shocked. He couldn't believe that this specific and niche model would even be the target of fakers. After that, he immediately sent an email to the vintage watch dealer he got it from, a reputable one or so I thought, who answered quite quickly that it is indeed original. Interesting. Maybe he bought it in good faith himself, or it is, after all, genuine? Back home, I started to look up the Edox Geoscope again, since I myself looked at quite a lot of offerings in my days, but never really pulled the trigger, and I was only half sure about what makes a true Edox Geoscope. I'll start with a quick bit of history of the brand and model, and head into the nitty gritty details of possible fakery after that. Edox, named after the Greek verb for time measurement, was founded in 1884 in Biel, Switzerland, by Christian Rüfli Fluri, a master watchmaker from Grenchen. The hourglass became their distinctive logo already in the early 1900s. They are best known for the Dolphin, Class 1, Hydrosub and Chrono Rally models. And the brand was among the top 10 largest Swiss watch manufacturers in the 50s and 60s. But for me, it was always the Geoscope first launched in 1971, which came to mind when Edox is mentioned. It was often dubbed the first true world timer, as it featured the 24-hour rotating world map as a centerpiece. It was available in whopping 48mm in diameter and also a smaller 42mm, which we have supposedly right here, which was still quite large back then. Additionally, both were available as right and left-handed editions, which was quite unique too. The Geoscope had a revival as a limited edition, 300 pieces made, in 2014, when Edox celebrated its 130 year anniversary. But this one featured a more standard 24 hour GMT hand on a non rotating world map on the dial with a date disc at 6 o'clock. Overall, that newer version offered a little less color than the vintage version, and it therefore went for a cleaner look in a large 46mm case. More of a revamp than a revival since aside from the visual differences, the whole concept changed from a world timer to a GMT watch. It is worth mentioning that Edox remains one of the few last truly independent Swiss watchmakers operating out of Les Genevais since the company was purchased by the Strambini family in 1983. Let's head back to the watch right here, which at least tries to impersonate a vintage 42mm geoscope from the 70s. I guess you already know which direction this is headed. This right here, after taking in multiple aspects under the macro lens as well, is a fake. But how can I be so sure, you might think. At least the case diameter is correct with 42 mm across 3 and 9 o'clock, without the crowns. The luck to luck distance measures 44 mm straight in the middle. It is 13.5 mm in height with a flat mineral crystal and has a weight of 148 grams including the bracelet, which has a lug width of 22 mm and tapers down to a slim 17 mm at the clasp. The latter has a stamped out hourglass logo on it. Not 100% sure if that one is original, it at least feels good. But the logo part looks a bit too simple maybe. The aforementioned aspects do not yet scream straight up fake but I would appreciate if someone with a real Geoscope 42 could maybe verify, disprove these case dimensions in the comments. Now let's get down to business. I would like to submit evidence number one of a total of seven, the crowns on this watch. First of all, on the original, there are two crowns which look the same. This one has different crowns, both in shape and size, and these fake ones have a laser engraved grid and hourglass on them, which looks quite cheap under the macro lens, to be honest. 
For evidence number two to four, we need to head over to the face of the watch. I think this one struck me first personally. The loom on the hour hands is ridiculously distributed and bright white, whereas the original has a more refined and distinct distribution pattern. Notice the diamond shape on the hour hand, for example. Of course, untouched loom should have patinaed into a nice cream or brownish color today, as you can see on this genuine one. But okay, these could have been exchanged or just been badly relumed. But there are just too many offerings of geoscopes out there with the exact same problem. So either there's a watchmaker out there that went over time with botched loom restorations, or it is simply a sign of fakery. Also, the black line on them isn't properly centered and the orange does seem to be of a different hue. Moving on, the hour ring, the one for 12 hours first. It is white. It shouldn't be white, but silver in color. Also, the ADOX imprint at 6 o'clock does not look too good up close. The same goes for the ADOX logo or the hourglass logo at 12 o'clock. It is too small and botchy overall. The 24 hour ring, which carries the characteristic star at 12 o'clock, is operated with the crown at 2 o'clock as intended. But this one feels wobbly, a property I cannot imagine to be true on the original one. But more evidently, it misses the extension on the zero and the whole font of the numerals is just off. It carries much more prominent serifs on this one than the original. Now for evidence number five, let's head to the main feature of this watch, the South Pole centered world map. I was first inclined to give this watch the benefit of the doubt, because the map on this one does not look as bad as on some other fakes I've seen online, which featured map prints that looked more like a watercolor drawing of my three year old, but not this one. The problems with it are more low key. Notice how the east and west or the red frame GMT, which is quite important of course, are all partially obstructed by the 24 hour ring above. The red zero, which marks the equator, is also crossed out by the very same line. This print is much more refined on the original. Not the easiest things to spot though. The frames of some of the map elements are also not as clean. For example, the African continent is cut off along the longitude on the fake one or how there is a strange orange color blob or landmass supposedly south of the USA. Just as a fun party fact, the colors on the original were not just intended to make it more visually appealing, but they represent how some countries official time deviates from the universal time UTC or GMT by one hour, summertime in Central Europe for example, which is shown in light brown and orange, while some don't, which are shown in white. Green denotes those countries that have half hour deviations. Very cool, don't you agree? It annoys me even more that this core feature is mocked by the pure execution of a fake like this. Not only visually, but technically as well. You see, the map is supposed to excise a full revolution every 24 hours to go along with the appropriate scale and sun position, just like the real deal. All done mechanically by a modification on the date wheel of the movement, but this fake couldn't replicate that. The map on this one just rotates every 12 hours with the hour hand. Well, I guess their goal was to make it move at all, to keep up appearances. But the whole world timer functionality is just out of the window then. I guess fakers just tick differently. The last one is actually already evidence number six on the list, which I would summarize as the wrong movement. Another sign for this is the hacking function when pulling the crown, which this one so gladly provides but the original geoscope with the EDA 2774 should not. Even more so, this one ticks six times per second, whereas the original was beating at eight times. I would have loved to show you the movement straight away, but the geoscope's case, both fake and original, had quite an elaborate monoblock design, where you could only access its heart through the top with a 14-sided wrench and by taking out the whole dial and inner bezels, etc. Even though this one's fake, it's not my fake. But given the aforementioned facts, I think we can already agree that we won't find an original movement inside anyways. On the back of this monoblock case, we find the seventh and final piece of evidence, the Edox logo. I have to admit, I didn't notice this one at first, but it looks off as well. The thin part of the hourglass just looks unrefined right here. And well, there you have it. I think the verdict is clear. And I am not happy with it, not at all because this is the exact thing that makes people scared about diving into the vintage watch world. Elaborate fakes, that may be obvious when looked upon through a macro lens like we just did, but not so clear when you only get five pictures online or something like that. 
so always ask for more details and maybe you can use this video right here to go sure with the exact model. I would be really happy if I can spare anyone the frustration of finding out post-purchase and if I am able to maintain some of the fun this amazing hobby should entail. As for my friend, he spent 2000 US dollars for this. Ouch. Which, for a well-preserved vintage Geoscope 42, would be very good, but also not an awfully cheap price where you would already smell the deceit. For example, there are $500 pieces out there on Etsy or eBay with washed out maps, which I would consider the easy to avoid traps. Nowadays, a well-preserved original one can fetch up to 4000 euros easily from reputable dealers that will gladly prove to you the authenticity in detail, including box and papers. And that's a price worth paying for a truly original and amazing 70s world timer in my opinion, especially now that I saw what can happen firsthand. And I think this is even worse than the aftermarketry on Seiko Pokes, for example, where I myself became the victim already, but both equally annoying. This exact geoscope right here will never end up on the market ever again. Of that, we will make sure. Stay safe and I hope you enjoyed this episode, which was admittedly especially tough to research, as there is only scarce and scattered info out there. I would appreciate your feedback or additional info in the comments and see you in the next one on the Time Worn channel.